Joining us now is Democratic Senator Chris Coons, a member of the Foreign Relations Committee. Senator, thank you very much. I know you were to the region recently as part of that congressional delegation and as well as, of course, in Munich at, this, at the security conference. So I want to start, first of all, where we left off with Josh Letterman about this dispute over the airspace and the fighter jets, because there is pressure from Congress, from a lot of experts, from former diplomats, uh, but not so much former military, because what the military is saying is that to get those MiGs there, first of all, you, you have to disassemble them and then reassemble them. To fly them there, they would be uh, subject to anti-aircraft fire, that we've not taken out the Russian anti-aircraft batteries. And to create a, 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 a fly zone, you have to attack Russian, Russia proper and get rid of their SAM 400s or Belarus. So it, it directly engages the US and NATO in a war with Russia. Where do you stand on this? So Andrea, um, first, what has just happened here in Congress is that the House has passed a $13.6 billion assistance package for Ukraine. Half of that is humanitarian, uh, comes to my subcommittee. Uh, half of it is military. We are continuing to provide billions of dollars of assistance to our eastern flank NATO allies like Poland um, and to continue to flow uh, military material and assistance into Ukraine to support their resistance against this brutal Russian invasion. On the specific question of whether or not um, MiGs that are uh, Polish jets uh, that they flew when they were part of the Warsaw Pact can be safely and usefully transferred to Ukraine. That is a complex logistical and policy question as your um, questioning of me just laid out. Getting them from Polish custody into the nation of Ukraine safely, having them actually meaningfully contribute um, to defending Ukrainian airspace and doing it in a way that doesn't make NATO in direct conflict by requiring us to shoot down Russian jets. That is a very tricky and thorny issue. Uh, a number of us in the Senate here have engaged directly with the administration, offered advice, input, encouragement. Uh, but I think we should be relying on our military experts to advise us on what is the best, most effective, and safest way for us to continue to provide robust military support for the Ukrainian defense against Russia's brutal and unjustified invasion. And the military is saying that we can do it, that they can get control of the airspace through stingers, through other means, not with fighter jets that would engage NATO. I want to ask you also about an exchange that took place today between Senator Rubio, the, of course, the ranking Republican, former chairman of Intel, and the head of national intelligence, Avril Haines, at this morning's worldwide threats hearing about the whole question of chemical and biological warfare, which the White House says is a Russian false flag. Russia has been laying out this argument for, the, for a number of months now about how there are these labs in Ukraine that are developing chemical and biological weapons, that the U.S. is involved, that they've discovered it, and uh, they've been making that argument for a period of time, and it's the argument they usually make before they use that kind of stuff themselves. Does Ukraine have any biological weapons research facilities? No, let me be clear. We do not assess that Ukraine is pursuing either biological weapons or nuclear weapons, which have been some of the, uh, basically, the, the propaganda that Russia is putting out. So, Senator, uh, the State Department is warning that they think Russia is planning uh, a biological or a chemical attack. So, Andrea, if we look at the history of Russian action in Syria, uh, in Chechnya, um, they haven't hesitated to be brutal, to escalate, and to use increasingly lethal weapons, including chemical weapons that were used in Syria against civilians. Um, this is yet another step where our intelligence community, and Avril Haines is the very capable director of national intelligence, is proactively sharing with the world what we are picking up through our intelligence sources are the intended next steps of escalation by Russia. I'll remind you, in the weeks before this conflict began, just two weeks ago today, President Biden and his national security team proactively leaked what they were learning about Russia's plans. Many of our allies, many in the press, many in the public, dismissed and said, oh, that's not going to happen. Putin wouldn't do that. 
tragically, Putin has taken every step that was predicted, and I am concerned that the idea they might use chemical weapons against civilians is just the next step in brutal, horrific escalation. I am co-sponsoring with Senator Graham a resolution to ask for an investigation of the crimes against humanity being committed by Russian forces and for which President Vladimir Putin should be held accountable. I think it's important that the world realize Ukraine is on the front line of freedom, defending against a brutal offensive by Putin and Putin's Russian forces. And the private sector is finally stepping up. Burger King just now, according to CNBC, is joining McDonald's, Starbucks, and others. Um, would, would you like to see more? Uh, because there, there are reports that some of the Wall Street investment banks are still dealing in Russian, in, in you know, Russian stocks and Russian assets. Andrea, I think I think Putin misjudged. He misjudged how fiercely the Ukrainians would fight him, and he misjudged how successfully President Biden's leadership would pull together the Western nations in a unified coalition against him to impose a very broad range of sanctions. Getting the Western private sector com companies like McDonald's and Burger King to sever their ties with Russia as well is the next step in fully isolating Russia and punishing the Russian government, which is really who we oppose, not the Russian people. But the Russian people need to realize that their leader has taken them into an unjustified, tragic, brutal war, and there will be costs for their aggression against Ukraine. Senator Coons, thank you very much for being with us. I appreciate thank you, it. Andrew.